Hello and welcome to Upfront with the People. I'm your host, Leon Lively. Today my guest is Mr. Bill Moss, the mayor, mayoral candidate for the city of Columbus. Welcome, Mr. Moss. Thanks very much, Leon. Good in, to be here. In the next half hour, we'll talk about the race for mayor and the city of Columbus and the issues in that race. Uh, Mr. Moss, first of all, where is your campaign at currently? What's the current status of your campaign? Well, we're, um, I think we've uh, established what our concerns are. We've gotten our issues out before the people. I think people have identified our campaign as being about neighborhoods and being about restoring uh, this, um, this city's neighborhoods, its infrastructure, and about the issue of ethics and government. And then we've, uh, we've been able to get those messages out. We've been doing the groundwork for this campaign. And of course, you know, it's often said that the real serious campaigning starts after Labor Day. And if that's the case, I think we're ready. So we're at a good, we're positioned to, uh, to go forward and look for a, vi a big victory. So you expect to be at this point then, at this point? Did you expect to be at this point in this point in your well, campaign? Well, of course, we knew, we knew that September 1st was coming, uh, of, uh, of course. And there are always a lot of things that we would like to have done that we were not able to do, but then we've got a lot done. You know, in a campaign, you can, you can dream all kinds of big dreams, uh, but then it comes down to what can you actually get done. And we've worked hard, and we've gotten a lot done, and I'm very satisfied with the fact that we're positioned now to... Uh, to have a good fall campaign and then go on to November 7th and, uh, and have a big, big victory. Now, you recently lost your second campaign director, is that campaign manager, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. What does mm -hmm. that mean for your campaign? Anything well, uh, you know, the first one that, uh, that uh, left the campaign, we, we, we just agreed that uh, it was best that he devoted his time to the other things that he was doing because he was not a, actually a full-time uh, campaign manager, and we realized that at the time, for us to go to the level that we, we needed to be at, that uh, we needed to get someone aboard full time. So we did that, and, um, and the individual who we had up until the 15th of August uh, was doing a good job for us. He helped us to get the campaign to the level where we are now, and uh, he had to go to law school, and he had already indicated that to us early on. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was no problem because we were prepared for his departure, and uh, we're in the process now of organizing the work of the campaign so that the load that he carried is dispersed among other individuals. And uh, we have someone coordinating the campaign and, and then of course our scheduler, we have a campaign uh, uh, volunteer director. Uh, so that kind of evens the work out and uh, we're moving forward. So we're in good shape. Uh, we, we don't have any problems in terms of Do you plan on replacing that person in that position? Well, you know, I, th I think the coordinator is, is emerging as, as uh, the person who's going to actually run the campaign. Mm -hmm. You know, so much falls on the candidate anyway, but of course in a race such as this, there is no way that I could do what I've done in the past, and that is pretty much conduct my own campaigns. I can't do that in this case, but I have a lot more people working with me in this campaign than I've ever had before. People are doing vital tasks. And so um, in terms of actually formally appointing someone, if that should become absolutely necessary, I would hope that the individual would emerge out of the people that, who are working with us now. And I think, uh, I think we're gonna be okay in that regard. Okay, let's talk about the future of our campaign. What lies ahead for your campaign as it comes closer to November 7th? Well, of course, we, uh, we, I think the main thing is we're organizing our volunteers because obviously ours is a people's campaign. We're continuing to get out among the people because, uh, of course, as I said, the people uh, aspect of this campaign requires us to take our message to the people on a personal basis. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, um, uh, we're gonna have to do some media advertising and that, but I would hope that our groundwork will work for us uh, to a great extent, and that means getting to the meetings, that means going, doing some door-to-door, -door, which we've already begun to do, that means getting out and walking the streets, and uh, of course having the events and, and bringing the media, uh, the media's attention to uh, what our concerns are, and just continuing to uh, express our, our view and our vision of what this city should be, and I think we're going to be able to do that effectively. That's where we're, that's where we're looking forward to uh, for, 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 uh, for the fall. Would you call your campaign a grassroots effort, Mr. Moss? It's definitely a grassroots campaign because, of course, we're involving people from all across the spectrum. Uh, there's no question that, uh, that uh, for me to win, 
I'm going to have to have a, uh, a real effective grassroots campaign. We've got a ton of volunteers. As a matter of fact, we've got at least 500 people hmm. who are aboard as volunteers. Now, what our challenge becomes is that of effectively uh, uh, assigning them and effectively using them. And that's what we're working on uh, at this time because we want to really do the kind of job in the last month especially with our volunteers that's going to be required for us to be victorious. So yes, it's grassroots all the way. Do you think that distincts you as a candidate in your campaign from the current uh, mayor? Well, there's no question about that because, uh, you know, this mayor disappeared after, after he was elected and uh, he's only surfaced in the last six months since, of course, this is obviously a, uh, a, an election year. But for the th first three years of his administration, we didn't see him. Uh, and the simple fact of the matter happens to be that uh, this mayor has been primarily paying attention to the desires and the needs of the rich and powerful in this community, a handful of uh, rich people downtown and then the developers. And that's where his focus has been. And so he's not been in touch with the people and he can't go to the people now on a personal basis because the people are fully aware that he has not met their needs and he's not kept his promises. Uh, how can you go out and justify the fact that every time it rains, people's basements all over the city flood? How can you justify the fact that every time it rains, the water backs up and the streets are, are flooded and people's cars are floating about and getting in wrecks, we're losing retainer, uh, retaining walls and, and such as that. And of course, the sewers and drains that he promised to fix that we passed a bond issue for back in 1991 he hasn't done it. He's taken the money and gone out to Hilliard and Dublin and New Albany and laid sewer lines for big developers and to the neglect of the people. So this mayor can't go to the people uh, on a personal grassroots level because he would have to respond to their questions and their criticisms. So he'll have to run a major media campaign and he'll spend, spend uh, big money on, on television in all probability. But I don't think uh, that's going to work. As a matter of fact, that is not going to work for him because the people are fully aware of what has taken place over the last three years. They know that this mayor has not done the job for the people of this city. Now, you've, you've said in the past that uh, the current mayor is being backed by financial powerhouses yes, in, in, this, exactly in, this, right. in, in this area. Yes. Can you actually compete against someone who may have the, the financial backing of some key players in well, the town? Well, you know, I, I, <laughs> that's a very good question. Can we compete? No, we're not going to uh, try and compete with the mayor in terms of money. Let me, let me give, you an idea, give you an example of what I'm talking about. Early on in my campaign, I, was, I had the opportunity to sit down and make phone calls from a list of all the big shots in this city, the developers, and I've worked with some of those people over the years, and being a member of the Board of Education, they oftentimes uh, you know, do business with us, and we've done business with them in the past. But uh, as I sat down to go through that process of calling these people and asking this one for $5,000 and this one for $10,000, I said, well, for heaven's sakes, I've got sense enough to know that if you take $10,000 from some developer, when he comes to you, you better respond. Well, if, if that means to take that kind of money, that makes me just like Lush uh, Mr. Lashutka the mayor and he's obligated to these people so he neglects the city where we need the sewers and drains and the infrastructure repaired he doesn't do it because he's paying attention to the desires and the wants of these big developers who are requiring him to expand and sprawl the city out we're in the three counties already and then to take the the, the resources and put in sewer lines and water lines out there cost us millions of dollars and he's having to neglect the, the, the people of the city. Well, now I'm, I've got to tell the people and get my message out there that I'm not going to accept that money and I haven't accepted it and I don't intend to because, and I'll treat those people fairly when they come to our administration and have needs, we'll work with them, but they'll have to answer the question and whatever their idea is or their project is, they'll have to answer the question for this mayor how's it going to be good for the people of Columbus? What I won't do is I will not put them at the head of the line before the people because the needs of this city are being neglected. We see it every day. I, I took a group of reporters around in one area of the city and just showed them 
the high level of dilapidated houses, boarded up houses that uh, are continually increased. I showed them the vacant lots where the code is not being enforced, uh, waist high weeds that uh, in all areas of the city. And it's not just on the east side where a few years ago that was the case. It's on the west side, it's on the north side, it's on the south side, it's all around us because this mayor has not been engaged, he's not been paying attention to the needs of the city. And so for those reasons, we're not going to try and go after that big power of money. Uh, we don't need it, we're not gonna accept it, we're gonna do business with them, but not, we're gonna, we're gonna treat everybody the same. We're gonna treat everybody okay. equally, but we're gonna take care of the needs of the people of this city. Okay, let's talk money some more. $4 okay. million. Dollars. $4 million? $4 million dollars is the, <laughs> the amount of money that the city agreed to give the Columbus School District back in 1975. Correct? That's exactly right, yeah. And the city has made what kind of effort to address that issue? Well, you know, it's amazing. Um, I raised oh, that for, if, I, if I may please, some background on that. First of all, this, the city made a, made a pledge to the district of, 20 million, of $4 yes. million. Dollars. Can you some background on that? Yeah, us? sure. W what happened was back in 1975, the city came to the Board of Education. I wasn't on the board at the time. But the city came to the Board of Education because Nationwide wanted a tax abatement for the improvements and expansion they were going to do up uh, at the uh, Nationwide Plaza. And what their arrangement was and what they promised us, Mayor Moody was in, in office at the time, they promised the Board of Education that if the board would go along with abating the taxes for that property for a 20-year period, mm -hmm. then the city would take the funds that would normally come to the school system, put them in a special fund out of which a $4 million staff development center would be built for Columbus Public Schools. Now, you gotta keep in mind that over a period of 20 years, that would have meant $20 million plus coming to Columbus Public Schools. Well, the Board of Education at that time agreed with it. Uh, Joe Davis, since that time, has asked Mayor Tom Moody about keeping that promise. Now, everyone, there were seven projects, eight projects altogether that would be funded out of those monies. All of the, and the one was the Staff Development Center for Columbus Public Schools. All the others were improvements around the nationwide complex up on North High Street. Every one of the projects was completed except the one for Columbus Public Schools. So in other words, nationwide got everything it wanted and the city even went into its own general fund to uh, complete some of the projects up at Nationwide. But not one effort has been made on the part of any one of the subsequent administrations to keep the promise to Columbus Public Schools. And what I did at the board table when I introduced the resolution to ask them to pay us the money, which of course passed six to one, uh, the president of the board, Mr. Teeter, did not choose to vote for it, but uh, what, what, uh, what, I introduced was the resolution that said, in as much as now the administration has come to the board, our administration, and said we want to build this teaching and learning academy, now is an excellent time for us to say to the city to come in and help us because we're talking about going out and raising from the private sector $14 million to create this in cooperation with the Ohio State University and the CEA, the teachers union. So we passed the resolution, we sent it over to City Hall, and we asked the mayor who who said he wanted to be the education mayor when he was running for office back in 1991. You would have thought he was running for the school board. He and Ben Espy both at the time. We asked him, pay us the money. Now, I raised the issue back in 1988. I also raised it again when I came back on the board in 1992. This time we got a resolution passed. The mayor, rather than using his position as, as chief spokesperson for the city and individual who says he supports Columbus schools, to say let us sit down together and work this out and figure out how the city can pay Columbus schools and support our school system this money which we clearly owe them. He got with his city attorney and came back and stood up with the president of city council and said to us and the, and the whole city, we don't owe you anything morally or legally. Well of course they owe us. And uh, so now what we have to do is um, they owe us the four million dollars and we've decided at the Board of Education to go in and talk with them. We have a standing committee that represents the Board of Education among board members are on it. And they'll go and talk with the city and hopefully we can get that resolved. I'll tell you this, I'm gonna be elected mayor on November 7th. 
after which we'll solve that and we'll, we'll get the money to Columbus Public Schools. We may not get it in a lump sum, but over a period of time, my commitment is we're going to, we're going to pay the school system those monies and we're going to help them uh, in whatever way we can with those monies to do what they need to do to improve our teaching and learning situation in the school system. And this mayor is actually going to support the Columbus Public Schools and be an advocate for Columbus Public Schools as my children have always and, and are still attending Columbus mm -hmm. Public Schools unlike the current uh, mayor's uh, children. Now what, as mayor, can you offer the, the Columbus School District, you currently are on the board, Mr. Moss, uh, what can you offer as mayor of Columbus? Well, you know, uh, I am currently on the board and, and you know, l let me just say this, I've been a very outspoken member of the Board of Education and th I'm finishing my 12th year now. And sometimes I've been controversial, and I've only been so. You've got to keep in mind that I am one of seven, so I only have one vote. I have no administrative authority. We're policymakers. So it's been, and, but at the same time, we represent the people out here who vote for us and spe expect us to be their voice on that Board of Education. And so as far as I'm concerned, it is necessary for me as a representative of the people that when they call with concerns and or problems to try and help them get them solved. And that's, uh, sometimes that requires raising one's voice a little bit. And uh, not to the point of, of, of a yell, but uh, I've had to be forceful and strong as a, um, as a representative of the people because I've always sought to get things done. And I think I've been effective in doing that. And I have not been in a popularity contest, and I'm not down there. I'm down there to serve the people and the children of the school district. That's what I've done. Now, what can I do as mayor? Well, you know, uh, I don't think I will have to be as, um, as uh, vocal in terms of my support for schools as mayor because that, first of all, he's the chief administrative officer of the city, and that gives him line authority. He also has much to say about the budget because the mayor uh, determines, along with city council's approval, of course, uh, he, he proposes what's uh, to be budgeted. And, uh, but, you know, there are all kinds of things. When we get about the business of fixing the ex infrastructure, repairing the infrastructure of this city, when we talk about parks and recreation, when we talk about streets, when we talk about sidewalks, when we talk about those areas around schools, when we're talking about finding ways to help even with the playgrounds uh, of the schools so that, so that children from neighborhoods can access those grounds and work with the Board of Education, work with the school system so that uh, schools can be more community friendly and communities can feel better toward those schools. This is the kind of climate, you know, that we want to create. And the mayor is the chief spokesperson for the city. The mayor is an advocate and he can choose to advocate for whatever he or she chooses mm -hmm. to advocate. So I'm going to continue to be a strong advocate for Columbus Public Schools and I think um, having put all of my children through the Columbus schools, and that's four of them. One is still in the Columbus Public Schools. I think that's a good indication. Mm -hmm. And having been on the Board of Education for in my 12th year now, I think that's another indication. And I've been, uh, I've been a very active board member, and I'm going to be an active mayor, and I'm going to support the children of this, uh, of this city, and that means a good education. Tax abatements? Tax abatements. You know, sometimes you have to grant those. But let me say, that, let, me, let me be very clear on uh, whenever I even consider a tax abatement. It has to be in the context of how is this going to help the people of Columbus and we can find ways to share those revenues that the school system might not get as a result of a tax abatement that is granted by the city. Now, I will only, gr I will only grant a tax abatement or go along okay. with a tax abatement if there is a clear indication to me and there has to be proof that, first of all, it's needed, that it's going to in, in, in enhance our ability to attract a particular business into our school district, and, uh, and that it's reasonable in terms of its terms uh, and that. But uh, some of the tax abatements, for example, that this administration has proposed recently that they had to withdraw because they, we created such a, 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 a stir about it because they were totally uncalled for and unfair toward the school system uh, are ridiculous. And we won't propose or support those kinds of abatements. But where tax abatement is going to be good for the school district, good for the city of Columbus, and going to be good for 
getting business into the city and businesses that, that is going to hire our people and provide good jobs with good pay, then we're going to work with those people. You know, I believe in business. I'm a businessman myself. I believe in business. I believe in labor. I think we certainly have a, a common interest and we have to go down the road together. So we're going to be business friendly, and we got to attract business and maintain and keep business. But uh, those tax abatements, we want to make sure that uh, if and when they're granted, that they're absolutely necessary, and they're going to be good for the whole of the city and not just for uh, the people who don't want to pay taxes. Okay. The Mayor Lashutka had pledged to beef up the uh, Columbus Police Department and then had recently stated that that may not happen. What are your rea what's your reaction to that? Well, he knew, you know, he was told. I don't know. He may have actually believed uh, that he could put 360 new police officers on the force. I think if he actually believed that, then he has to be a very naive individual, and that's surprising in as much as he was the city attorney for the number of years that he was. The dispatch clearly doubted that he could do that because over a 10-year period leading up to the time that he was uh, running for mayor back in 1991, there had only been over a 10-year period a net increase of 296 added police officers. So now what he was promising was to add 360 additional officers to the force over the period of his first term in office. Well, he, he couldn't do it. Ben Espy, who was running against him at the time, told him that he was pipe dreaming and said it was not going to happen. Uh, but he insisted that he could do it. Well, it turns out that when he saw that he couldn't do it last year, when time when he was facing an election year, uh, they started to add all kinds of unsavory people to the force. They started to actually put ex-felons on the police force. And he talks about solving crimes. Well, for heaven's sakes, you don't solve the crime problem by putting criminals on the police department. And that's what this mayor's done. And we've got some there that has resulted from that policy. But uh, he was caught at it. The media caught him and then confronted him with it. And um, he claimed he didn't know anything about it. But then he came back and told us that uh, it was because not enough minorities and women were getting on the force. Well, it turns out that that could, didn't hold water in as much as 21 of the 29 people who were involved in the whole, in the, in the recruitment class were, uh, were white males. So it was not an issue of, of minorities or women. It was simply a matter of the mayor trying to keep a political campaign promise, and he couldn't do it, and he got reckless with his recruiting. Um, it's unfortunate that, uh, that 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 took place. I won't make wild promises. First of all, we're going to we're going to work to attract good police officers to the city. We're also going to work to see that police officers and other city employees that we hire live in Columbus. I think that's very important. I think it's time for us to say that if you want to work for the city of Columbus, you, we want you to live here. Home is where the heart is. And if we're good enough for you to come and make a living off of, off of our taxpayers, then we want your interest and your heart to be focused, and we want your bodies in Columbus. We want you to pay Columbus taxes. We want you to support our school system. We want you to feel good enough about our city to live here, and I think you'll work better to make it a better city. So we're going to do something about that. That's an issue we're going to, um, to be addressing. So um, um, we, we've, got, we've, got, we've got a lot to do, and, and we've got a lot of improvements to make. But on the issue of crime, we're going to support good schools, and we're going to work on crime prevention. We're also going to work to improve the relations between the citizens and the police so that we build up a higher level of trust, build up a stronger community. Policing is something that we're going to, um, to promote. We've got some education to do in that area. That's both at the police level and among the people to know what it is and what it is not. But we're going to work with the police and we're going to, we're going to uh, improve conditions so that we can reduce the level of crime and then prevent crime. And I think that's the, the best answer. What, what, as mayor, would you do for the heart of the community around Columbus? For the heart of the, of the community? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, we're going to... There's, there's, there's such a large part of the downtown area that seems to be neglected. What would you do for, the, for these people? Well, that's, you know, that's, you're, you're, you're absolutely right, and that's what we've been talking about so much during this campaign. We're, we're going to work with neighborhoods. You know, we're, we, we're a diverse community. We've got neighborhoods that are attractive, but they've been, they've, they've been and are being neglected. We've got boarded up houses, which we referred to earlier. We've got people in Clintonville and the Beachwall area 
whose houses flood every time it rains on the east side, on the west side, it's happened because I've been out there. I've heard from the people, we're going to work to improve, we're going to repair the infrastructure. And when I say that, I'm talking about the streets, but I'm talking about sewer lines and, and storm drains. We're going to improve those. We're going to uh, fix those up. Now, I don't know what we're going to find when we get in there. But whatever we find, we're going to tell the people and we're going to get about the business of repairing it. I think if we do that, I think if we maintain and improve our parks and recreations, which directly impact the quality of life of this city, then that's going to go a long way to improve the overall climate of our city for people to feel good about being here. We also want to, you know, the mayor sets a tone for a city, if he will. Uh, we want to create a, a united community, a united city. We've always been a giving city, a caring city. We want to accentuate that. We want to remind people how the people of Columbus that we are a great community, that we are a caring people, and that we have every reason to feel good about the fact that we are Columbus citizens. And we don't have to spend their, their taxes on building a kickball stadium to, um, to, uh, to improve uh, the quality of life here, especially when we're neglecting neighborhoods at the rate that this current administration is neglecting them. That's what we're going to do. We're going to improve the neighborhoods, and we're going to work with people in the neighborhoods to improve conditions. I think that's going to be the centerpiece of our, of our administration. I think that's what we're going to do for Columbus, and I think that'll be enough okay. for a start. And you have declared that this, uh, this campaign will be the mother of all upsets. Well, <laughs> I, <laughs> well you know, I've said that and because it's, it's, it's very, it's very um, it, it, it's disheartening that I read in the paper, some guy, here it is, the 1st of September, and some reporters written in one of the suburban papers, uh, he has already written my campaign off. What is he talking about? <laughs> The, the last time I checked, the, the, uh, the election was November 7th. We're going to win this race, mm -hmm. and that is a fact. So, it, you know, some people it'll be an upset, some it won't. There are many people who fully expect us to win, and we're going to win. And for those people who do not believe in Bill Moss, the so-called powers standing behind the current mayor? Well, the fact of the matter is, you know, the Columbus Monthly wrote very clearly and, and said up front that... Uh, if this administration started to take my campaign seriously, the boys in the big house are going to open their wallets up and make sure he gets four more years. Well, I think that tells you right there what this administration is all about. They're going to assure him four more years for what? Because he's doing everything they ask him to do. Okay. And to the neglect of the people again. That's going to be the difference in Bill Moss and Greg Lashuk. Okay. Well, Mr. Bill Moss, the mayor, mayoral candidate for this uh, city of Columbus, he's... Uh, have an aggressive campaign running currently, and uh, we'll see what happens on November 7th. I'm Leon Lively. You've been watching Two Upfront with the People. Thanks for joining us. Quit treating your high blood pressure. You had a stroke. You're dead. No tickets. No next time.